Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's the morning after the night before. Welcome to the No Chof Des podcast. It's a transfer podcast. Because quite a few things to discuss. Um, <laughs> I know exactly where to begin. I know where you guys want me to begin. And that's uh, the bomba, as the separate press are calling it. The bomba! Ogriashvili has gone to Abo. Now, I did an Instagram live last night, which was a little bit all over the place because I had people asking me constant questions, which is fine because I, I like it. I like people getting involved. I like people interacting and it's great. Um, but what I will say is this is a player who I said many months ago would fit in perfectly to our squad. He'd fit perfectly into our team. He's got all the attributes that we would need in a wide left position, in a second striker position as a number 10. And... While he hasn't had a good season for injury reasons or whatever reason, um, he hasn't performed. In fact, I think he was injured between the beginning of November to the beginning of January, so it's like two months out. And I honestly believe that he was going to come to Ammonia. I know we had an offer. We gave him an offer. He was thinking about it. Um, and all of a sudden, he's, he's joined up well. Now, while it came as a shock to everyone, myself included, when you take a step back and you think how and why, you're just going to rack your brain in. But I know how transfers work. I know how they work. They, they don't happen overnight. Some of them do. On the rare occasion, you know, it's a random phone call from a chairman to an agent or whatever, and then the deal gets done within hours. Paperwork goes through and it's done. Now, Ogriashvili... His contract was going to be up end of this month, end of May. My apologies. So he obviously received offers from many clubs, and we didn't know that Abuel was one of them. We didn't know. But it happened, and he's gone there. Now, make no mistake about it. I've seen this happen time and time again. A lot of players, a lot of agents use offers from other clubs as leverage to get better deals elsewhere. Now, the story goes, or the rumour has it, because I'm just going off rumours, because there are many, and, and this is another thing I'm going to step on in just a moment, the word rumours. So just remember that, rumours. Rumour has it, on one year, we offered him €350,000 a year for two years. Okay. And the rumour also has it that he's joined up well on a three-year deal for 450000 so 100000 more a year. Now, okay, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, that's true. Is there a possibility that maybe he and his agent saw the offer from Ammonia back in January when we were linked with him, or maybe a more recent offer, and said to Abuel, who were probably snoop snooping around at the time, same time as us, and they probably said, right, Ammonia have offered this much, what can you do? And they've just gone, there we go, we'll give you that much. And he's decided to go there. Now, he's 29 years old, and he's been offered a three-year deal at a club who aren't really good. He's, oh, there we go. Stefano reckons that we weren't even interested. That's what you've heard. Now, I've heard different. I've heard that we were interested back in January, and an offer was made back in January. See, this I'm talking about the word rumours, a word that I used earlier, rumours, stories. No one knows. There aren't any quotes from the agent. Funny that. His agent has remained quiet. There's no, there's no quotes from the player. There's no quotes from any clubs or sporting directors. It's just rumours. You go to the Gafanil, you hear this, you hear, I don't know, Nigo saying something. You go to the Beriptero, you hear Banayoti saying something. It's all historias, man. I know Cyprus is a small island. I know people talk. All right, these things happen. And more often than not, you're going to hear someone saying, oh, yeah, well, this guy's really reliable. And well, I've heard it time and time again. This one's reliable. He's He, he knows people at the club. And Omoni going to sign on Kriashvili. He goes up well. I didn't see any stories in the press, any rumours about Ogriashvili going to Abuel. That came out of left field. So that one was kept quiet. So there you go. We're surprised. We're shocked that he hasn't joined us. But here's the other thing I'm going to say. And I said this in my Instagram video yesterday, right? If a player doesn't think that Omonia is their first choice. If he's given a list of teams, five or six teams, he says, right, you've had an offer from this one, this one, this one, and this one. 
who you're going to join. If Omonia is on top of that list for that player, I don't want him. Because if he's saying, well, I can get a better offer at Abuel, I can better, get a better offer at, um, I don't know, Let's Poznan, I could get a better offer at, I don't know, Mainz. I'm going to go to that club. I'm not going to go to Omonia. If you want to go to a team that ended up eighth in the table, that aren't going to be playing European football, that have got financial difficulties, that sack managers left, right and centre, then go there. But if you want to come to a club that's potentially going to be playing Champions League football, that's going to be playing Euro European football, to boost your stature, to give you a final push, because he's 29 years old, how many, how many more opportunities is he going to get to play in Europe, European football? Unless Upwell move up the table, which could happen. But then looking at their squad, doesn't look like it's going to happen, really. They're, I mean, they've gone top-heavy. I mean, they've, they've basically come all over their strikers and said, Eli, we're going to go attacking. And there, they've jizzed all over their player squad. They said, right, we want strikers, 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 forwards, forwards. What about defence? What about midfield? What have they got defensively and in midfield? So what, they're just going to play five strikers, yeah? Five forwards, whatever. Let's not worry, let's not worry about them. Let's not worry about them. There you go. He never had a full season. He's a luxury. This is what I said. I said this earlier. He was injured from November to January. He missed, I've got it written down, Ella. He missed 12 league games in that time. 12 league games. Now, whether it be injuries, whether it be he fell out with uh, Ketspar, I don't know. Even Ketspar came out uh, in an interview the other day with a Georgian channel. He said if he's if the players received a better offer, then he'll probably go. So financial, financially, money's the money talks, as they say. In what positions do we need players? Now Lufthansa has gone. Do you think we need to assign a central defender? I'll answer that in just a moment. I'll answer it in just a moment, Andrea. I'm not going to forget that one. Uh, we have to sign Zahid. Well, is Zahid going to stay now that they've signed Ograshvili? Now, see, this is another thing that the other problem that Abu have, and I said that I'm not going to talk about them, but this is another thing. If Zahid wants to stay, then obviously he's going to want a good deal financially. Now, if he sees that Ogriashvili has come in on 450,000 a year, allegedly, if he's on 450,000 a year, and he's going to say to Abu, hang about, I've been here a season, full season here, because I was on loan at Banthanagos, whatever, and I had a pretty good season. I, I've been a, your best player this season. You know, in a shit season, I've been your best player. And this guy's come in after missing 12 league games, scoring... How many goals did Dogger really score? We got it written down. Nine goals in, in, in league. Nine goals. Am I going to stay with you guys if you can't offer me a, a better deal? I think I should be on more. Bargaining tools. That's the word. Those are the words, shall I say. Bargaining tools. Just as Ogriash really used Omonia as a bargaining tool to join Aboel... Zahid can do the same. Now, if Zahid wants to join Omonia, if Omonia is his first choice, sign him. But I'm hearing Galatasaray interested, Antalya Spor interested. We're... It's up to the player. If the player doesn't want to join us, then fair enough. Whatever. If he doesn't want to join us, fine. Because like I said before, I don't want players who see us as second choice. Now, on to players that we could sign. Stotch is another name that has been mentioned. And if you see in the title, where is it? Transfer talk and something else. I, I don't even know what the fucking title of this show is. Mini, media manipulation. Edo. This is another thing that you guys need to understand. Right now, it's silly season. Transfer window is open. There's rumors left, right and center. There are players leaving clubs, players joining clubs, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of journalists don't have anything to write about. Euro 2020 is coming. or 2021 now is coming. So in the build up to that, they want to get scoops. They want to hear about this. And I've seen so many stories on one ear link with that one. I'll well link with that one. I'm not going to sign this one. Da, 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 da. Everyone's got a story. You know, you go on 24 Sport, you go on Thema, you go on Get Gida, all these different stories, different rumors. But unless the player is holding the shirt with the scarf, with the, with the sporting director, unless it's been announced on the club's Instagram, ignore it. Because all these media companies right? These websites, they need clicks. It's called clickbait. You've probably heard of this term. I'm going to explain it. They put a story saying, Ogriashvili is going to sign for Omonia tomorrow. Everyone clicks on it to read it. They get 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 views, right? At the bottom, there's an advert for Zorba or 
uh, I don't know, a fucking air conditioning company. They pay to be on that website. They pay to be on that page. Yeah. So in the future, when it comes to negotiating adverts, 24 Sport or whoever, Thema can say, right, this story we wrote about Ograshvili got 30,000 views. This story we, we published about Agindola got 20,000 views. We're going to charge you more for the next time we write a story. And that's how it works. These media companies make money from the adverts that are on the websites. It's the same with YouTube. When you see all these adverts on YouTube, the person that has put up the video gets paid based on the adverts. That's how it works. So all you people going crazy about all these rumors, ignore them. Now I put up this, this Instagram story, right, today about Stotch. I don't, I don't think he's going to join us. Yeah, I'm the one that made up the fucking story just to see how many people have uh, replied. And in the space of four minutes, I've had one, two, three, Edo. All these people responding. That's how easy it is. I put up a post the other day on Instagram about Gergo Nagy, a player, uh, a Hungarian central midfielder that's out of contract. I know his agent, but he hasn't been. Uh, um, Approached by Omonia, but I put it just to see what people reacted. 21 people in seven minutes messaged me about it. That is how easy people can be manipulated online. And this is what I'm trying to say, tell you guys. For everyone that's reading these newspapers, don't believe anything until the player has announced it or the club has announced it or Lakuda standing there holding the shirt, shaking their hands or they're in the fucking grafio, having a cafe talking about the transfer or whatever. Ignore it. Because between now and the beginning of the season or between now and the end of the transfer window, you're going to hear rumour upon rumour upon rumour. There have been about 40 players linked with Omonia at the moment. What are you going to believe? Right. Anyway, what position... Uh, sorry, uh, Andrea. What position do we need players? Right. We got used to at centre-back. I still think we need another defender. Because Sati will probably be our regular right-back eventually. Because this is what I think is going to happen. Like I said, I'm, I'm only guessing here. So don't take it as gospel. I think that with Vitor Gomez gone, we're going to need another central midfielder. I think Shehu can play that position. I think that's Shehu's best position. I've been saying it for a long time. Central midfield is his best position. And we saw against Granada in the uh, Europa League how well he played. So I think Psati will be our long-term right back and Shehu will be a central midfielder. And I think we need another defender. You stay 33. I don't know if Adam Lang's going to be here. If he has a good Euros, then clubs will be interested. So that perhaps we'll need two more defenders. And now, now I can tell you full well from what I've heard, we're going for a left winger, a right winger, and the number eight. Now, Zahid could be that player because he could play central midfield. He could play as a number 10. He can even drift out left because I've seen him do that for, for the last Hagia. So there's that. So I think we need at least four players, at least four players. But then we don't know if players are going to leave. There's talks about Duris possibly leaving. Again, rumours. Let's talk about Loiso possibly leaving. Again, rumours. You gotta read into all of this. Fabi, Fab, apparently Fabi's joy left. Last month he was at Ayek. This month he's at Banathanai Goz. Next month he's at where? Liverpool. A few few days ago he was in Saudi Arabia joining a team out there. Rumors. Nothing's happened. We'll give Banayodu a chance. In, over the, listen, Banayodu des, deserves a chance. I think he's done well since coming into the team, but perhaps he needs more time. And that, I think this is why pre-season is very important, which goes back to what I'm saying about transfers. It's very important for me that we sign players before we go uh, to Poland for our um, pre-season uh, tour or pre-season warm-up. Because pre-season is huge for players in terms of fitness, in terms of getting used to the, the new system, getting used to the teammates. You know, we signed Ernest Asante right at the end of the transfer window. And, you know, it took him time to settle because his family wasn't in Cyprus, all that kind of stuff, which is why we need to be signing players as soon as possible or before we go to pre-season, end of June, beginning of July. And that way it'll be easier. But then again, even if we do sign players afterwards, it doesn't matter because this is a fucking great team, a great club, uh, you know, that everyone gets on and it won't take that long for a player to get used to their teammates. I'm not sure, but I think Ogriashvili has a bad character. And the other question, oh, well, money. Okay, well, okay. I don't know the person. I, I, I told you this. I told you on my Instagram video, right? I did this um, 
this Photoshop. I don't know if you guys saw. I did a Photoshop of uh, Ketspire being announced as a um, uh, Mechadeza 2023. He signed a new contract, right? Let me find it. it it's true. He signed a new contract to 2023, and um, they announced it on their Instagram. So I took a photograph of it, took a screenshot of it, and then I took another uh, Photoshop of um, this little stick man saying, fuck this shit, I'm out, and I put Okriashvili's face on it. So I put it on my my Instagram. I'm sure you guys have seen that. Sorry, just give me two seconds. I'm just trying to find it on my phone. My phone is really slow today. Uh, where is it? I'm going to find it. Sorry, these are the joys of live streaming, aren't they? You're just trying to work it all out and try to speed things up. It's a bit tricky because I'm trying to... Right, so... I did this Photoshop Mechri 2023 Ketspire, and he's Ketspire shaking hands with uh, all, the, all the execs, you know, humbly as well. Humbly, humbly. And it's got, fuck this shit, I'm out, Ogriashvili. Now, as you can see here, this is a conversation between me and Ogriashvili. There you go. This isn't Photoshopped. And as you can see... He's laughing about it. He's laughing about it. There you go. Now, I could have put that up on my uh, Instagram, on my stories, and people would be going, oh, my God, he was going to join Ammonia. Doesn't mean nothing. He just found it funny. But would a, would a player be responding if he had a good relationship with his manager? Would he be doing that if he had a good relationship with Ketspire? So perhaps he's a bit of a shitty character. I don't know. But he messaged me laughing about it, so he find, finds me funny, so he's all right. Uh, Upwell Money. People are telling me that Upwell, uh, I've got this German investor, and he's pumped money into the club. Again, rumours. Rumours. If there's been a German investor and money has come in, the club has to announce it. That's an answer to their shareholders or whoever. That's an answer to the government. You mean to tell me it's all done grifa I don't believe that for a second. So if there is a German investor, how much has he invested? Where's the money come from? And why doesn't anyone know about it? Has there been an announcement? I haven't seen it. So whatever. These three signings they made will hurt them even more financially, even more if they don't have any success. B thank you. Double or nothing, Dora, for money, Dara. He's been re-elected. He's gone balls deep, signing all these forwards. Kavili Ta is a good signing. He's better than what they got. He's better than Yuhu. He's better than Ghana. Zaha Saha's gone back, hasn't he, to Israel? Better than what they got. He'll get them goals this season. But he'll only get them goals if he gets the supply. Isn't Dongala going to supply? Zahid, we don't know if he's going to be there. Ogreashvili. Who's in the middle of the park? Anwar's gone back to Spain, hasn't he? So they're going to rely on. Who? That's what I'm saying. They've gone balls deep getting forwards. But what about in midfield? Who's going to protect the back four? Come on now. Anything can happen again until August. Thank you very much. Football fans can be very fickle. Thank you very much. Uh, listen, I, I know, I know, I know. They need eight more players to, to challenge for the title. I'm not worried about Abuel. This is what I'm saying. I'm not worried about them. And people think I'm worried about Abuel. I Listen, I said this with Roy on the podcast many, many weeks ago. Even Roy said it himself. They're going to be back. They're too big to be you know, a, an eighth place team. And if you look at the way that things are at the moment, if you let's just gauge right now, the here and now, okay? We've won the league, so we're going to be title contenders. The Goddess have released a lot of players. I don't think they've signed anyone yet. So what's going to happen there? Are they going to bring in players? Are they going to bring in so many players that it's going to take time for them to gel? I don't know. IL are probably the most stable club at the moment. They've made a few signings. They haven't released that many players. Ayek have obviously signed Thiago. They've signed a few players themselves. They've released a few players. So they're switching things up a little bit. Again, that might take time for them. Abolon, wow. How many players have they released? How many players have left? They've got a new manager, this crazy German guy. You know, absolute nutcase. That I can't see that working out. <laughs> I really can't. This might come and bite me in the ass, but I can't see that happening and working out with Gizzi as well. Come on now. Can you say happy birthday? Is that a name or is that a swear word? I'm not going to say that because I don't know who that is. I don't know who, what that means. Okay. Who, this person, this Muscan person, who is that? What's their Instagram? I want to see if that's a real person because I've seen people being tricked live on air and I'm not going to be saying nothing that I don't know about. All right. Three more alerts on Instagram. There's more alerts. Okay. So it's, it's not people messaging about the, the rumor. But again, as I said, 
all these messages from people that saw my Instagram post. And this is what I'm talking about transfers. This is what I'm talking about rumors. Anyone can start a rumor. Anyone. And if you've got a little bit of influence, if you know a few people, immediately people are going to think, ah, you know something. So I'm going to follow you. I'm going to watch your content. I'm going to click on anything that you click on. Nah. And I'll do this every day. I'll do this every day because I'll tell you what, sooner or later, there's going to be one of these newspapers or one of these websites picking up on it and they're going to put it and they're going to say, oh, Monia, link with this player because someone on Instagram said it. Listen, a lot of these journalists work hard. They work so hard and it's so difficult to get stories. So difficult, which is why they're asking questions, this and that. It's understandable. Okay? But some of the stuff I've seen, man, the conspiracy theories... One plus one plus one makes a hundred. Anyway. Muskan is his name, my friend. Shiv, who is Muskan? What is their Instagram? Tell me their Instagram, if they have Instagram. And if that's a legitimate person, I will send them a, a, a message on Instagram myself. Yeah? I'll do it myself. We will talk again in December when money runs out. What? For who? Abuel or us? Because we've got a bit of money. I think we made 9 million euros from the European campaign, unless you mean Abuel. Hasn't their money run out already? This is what I'm saying. How, how can they afford to bring in these players? But then again, you know, they've released a couple of players. I mean, I don't know how much, um, what's his name, Merkiz, how much was he on? I don't think he was on big money, but they're probably thinking, well, we, we could have afforded to pay him another year. So um, the money that they're saved on his transfer, on his, uh, on his wages, they're going to put towards... This is, you've got a balance sheet, you've got a good accountant as well, then you can work these things out. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something else, right? Um, a lot of these wages, they usually spread out over time. So while he's on 450000 a year for three years, that might be paid in installments. He might be paid every month. He might be paid every week. While it's a three-year contract, they, they might say at the end of the three years, okay, we, we haven't afforded to pay for the rest of your contract, but we st we'll still pay you the rest of it over three more years. So he can go join another club and he'll still be paid by, by Abuel. It's happened. It happened with Adebayor, actually, with Spurs um, and Real Madrid. So, um, you know, he was still being paid. I think he joined, he joined Crystal Palace on loan and he was still being paid by Spurs and Real Madrid, the wages. Because they spread it out. And that's exactly that's exactly what's probably happened with Ogriashvili. No? Oh boy, they're running out. Oh, there you go. There you go. Running out of loans, they're running out of money. They ain't got pots of piss in. But who cares about them? Let's focus on us, man. This is this is the thing. I think that's the other problem. Because the media is so pro Abuel, practically every media company in Cyprus are right wing. And there. So of course they're gonna back Abuel. And we're gonna be the ones that can be brought down. It's a fact, isn't it? Because of who we are, because of the, the political allegiance from many years ago and the way that the club is, they're kicking us. They've been kicking us for years. So, of course, they're going to be celebrating when, when Abuel bringing all these players. Of course, they're going to celebrate because they're going to think that Abuel are going to be back again. They're not. They're not. They're just sack another. They'll, they'll sack Bursa after like six or seven games, probably. If we don't sign anyone, we still have a very good team. Don't worry, Money fans. I agree. We do have a good team, but we still need some depth. Okay, we still need a couple more players. I still, like I said, we, I think we need three or four players uh, with experience, mind. And don't forget, we've still got Humble to break through. We've got Venezuela. We've still got uh, Bani. We've got all these young players breaking through, but they need older players there to um, to give the players, the uh, the younger players, the experience and talk to them. Which I, was, I did the video after the Olympia Goals game when we lost 1-0, saying that younger players need to talk to the older players, like your Hooper Chans, like your Yordis, all these players that have won trophies, so they can learn from them. Gagel's doing it now. Luis is doing it now. Johnny's is doing it. And we see how well they've, they've blossomed. But the more experienced players we have coming in, uh, the better it is for the younger players. It's not hindering their development. We've got a manager that knows about development. Um, so, yeah. Anyway. I'm making a video asking live YouTubers to wish a happy birthday all over the world. 100 countries. How did you find this video, Shiv? Have you subscribed? Subscribe and I'll do the message. Yeah? Subscribe, like, tell your nunna, and I'll do the message just for you. Okay, right. My prediction: Olympia's Nicosia will challenge one. Ooh, 
<laughs> with the players that have left them, I don't know, man. They've lost three or four players, haven't they? So it'd be difficult, but um, you never know. You never know. Stranger things have happened, you know. So, yeah, let's have a look. Have I got any more messages here from, from Instagram? Nope, nothing there. Uh, do you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. I was um, was a little bit disappointed we didn't sign Jason Punchin. I know we were interested. I don't know if we made an offer. I spoke to Punch, actually, um, and he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me that on one he made an offer. So let's just get that one straight. He said he's had offers from, from big clubs in Cyprus. So he might have had an offer from uh, a boy as well. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that we didn't get him. But, and actually, listen, he's he's happy. He's happy at uh, Buffer. His family are settled. He's learning the language. Uh, he's doing his coaching badges. So good luck to him. I like him. He's a nice guy. He's a good player as well, man. Uh Done. I found you randomly. Okay, right. So, what's the person's name? Can you say happy birthday, Muskan? Happy birthday, Muskan. Am I pronouncing it right? Muskan, Muskan, Muskan. Happy birthday. How old are you? I don't know how old you are, but have a good day. Be safe. Um, I don't know where you're based, but wherever you are, be safe. Do your social distancing. We've got COVID at the moment, and everyone is fucking suffering, and everyone's miserable, and we're feeling like shit. Um... But be happy that you're safe. Be happy that you're still alive. Uh, look after yourself. Health is wealth. And this is what I go back to these transfer rumors. Don't sit there getting stressed out about rumors, okay? I know your blood pressure is going through the roof because so-and-so are signing this and that player and I'm wondering have only signed a couple of players. Don't worry about it. If you've got exams, study for your exams. If you've got family members that are ill, focus on them. If you've got a job, focus on your job. Family, focus on that. Football comes last. We say that Omonia is a family. You know, us Omonia fans, we're our family. And um, I'll say this while I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I've gone 26, 27 minutes, Donna. Well, I'm going to wrap it up in a minute, okay? If you need to talk to anyone and you don't feel comfortable talking to family or close friends because you're worried about being judged, you've got my Instagram. Message me, okay? I'm here to talk to people. I mean, fair enough. I do my Instagram videos and I respond to as many as I possibly can. But if you're feeling like shit, if you're feeling down, Message me. It's not a problem. I will talk to anyone. I suffer from depression and anxiety myself, so I know exactly what you guys are talking about. Okay, so if you're feeling like shit, if you've got problems, if you want to talk about anything, it could be anything. Erection problems, you can talk about... I, I can talk to you about erection problems. Not that I've got them, okay? I've never had that problem, thank goodness. But if you want to talk about that and you don't want to talk to your friends about that, that's fine. Like I said, message me about anything. I'm not, I'm not even joking. Um, we're all going through a difficult time at the moment. Um... And it's good to talk to some people that don't know your situation and, and uh, it usually helps to get things off your chest anyway. So, yes, I'm going to ask a question to you guys because I've still got 13 people watching. Who do you want to come to Amonia now? Now that we don't have uh, Ogriashvili, uh, Zahid is one name. Give me, give me one player. Give me one defender. Give me one midfielder. And give me one attacker who you want to come in. There you go. I'm putting it to the chat now. I'm giving it to you guys. I'm giving you guys the opportunity to talk, give some suggestions. There we go. Thanks. You're welcome. 20 years, India. Shiv. So, yeah. Um, I forgot the name. Muskan, happy 20th birthday. Happy 20th birthday. Please be responsible. That's another thing. Please be responsible. I know shit's happening in India at the moment. You've got a bad COVID situation. Listen to the government. Stay at home. I know it's a massive, massive country, and I've seen photographs. I've seen images. Stay at home. Self-isolate. Stay away from people. Look after yourselves and your family. Be don't be selfish. Hmm. I don't think Omani will get any more players from Cyprus League. I agree, right? Dimitri, I think you're spot on. I think you're spot on. Um, right now we we've gone up a level now, and um, this is no disrespect to the Cypriot League because there are, there are a lot of quality players in the Cypriot League, and I can tell you three or four players are actually being looked at by clubs in Germany and in Italy, and I know this for a fact. But we need to aim a little bit higher now. Gone are the days where we're going to be signing Gizzi Lazvili and all these other players. Marcata, who was a good player. I know he liked a few fucking Lagia, but he was a good player for us. Um, but we need to be signing players at the standard of Matt Derbyshire, Jordi Gomez. Yeah? Those names. Thomas Huberchan. Adam Lang. Michael Lufna. Shehu, who's an international. These are the players that we need to be signing now. 
international players. Yeah? And I know people really coming at me with Duris. Oh, he's an international. He hasn't done nothing. But if he stays, I'm telling you, he's going to bang goals next season. Can you imagine him and Shepard if they hit top form? He's going to bang goals next season. Trust me. I'm a Michael Duris guy, though. Always will be. And that's why not only will I be supporting Hungary at the Euros, I'll be supporting Slovakia. I'm waiting for my flag to come. Zaharil from Olympia goes, eh, maybe, maybe. But again, I don't think Olympia goes are going to be too happy selling all of their players. They've had a great season. Maybe Zaharil will go to the Godes or Abolon. You don't know. Elia from, F yes. See, I've been talking about this kid for the best part of two seasons. He is... Different class, man. He's too good for ethnic Oz, man. He's too good. But I've heard that Reading from the championship have been snooping around. That's what I've heard. Again, Zaharil. Maybe. I said to Roy the other day, what about Jan Yoda? He went, fuck that. <laughs> Can you imagine? Do you know what, Gobelia? I want to play a game with you guys. Since you guys are watching this live, yeah? I want you guys to name me a player... Throughout the world, could be in Australia, could be in Germany, whatever, an obscure player, someone that maybe someone hasn't heard of, and say, I want him linked with Omonia. And I'm going to put that on my Instagram story just to see what people are going to say. I'll do that right now. Right now. So tell me a player. Va from Buffalo. Now that is, a, that is a player. That is a player. Yeah, how long has he got left on his contract anyway? Let's have a look. Keep typing, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for his uh I'm gonna look for his stats. I'm gonna look for his uh what's it called contract. How long has he got left? He's probably got a contract till 2022, 2023. Because Buffalo are smart when it comes to transfers. Valakari's another player I'd love to have at the club. What a fucking player he is. Vaz contract runs out. Out there, come on, where is it? He's out of contract, Ega Modo. He's out of contract. We can sign him for now. Right, Nedelev, this one, I'll give you guys this one for free. I spoke, this is a fact, I spoke to, uh, oh, shit, one second. Sorry, I spoke to a guy that knows his agent very well, very, very well. And um, what I was told is that he's had an offer from a club in Bulgaria he wants to stay in Bulgaria because he's settled. I think he had so he spent some time in Germany. Um, but no contact has been made from Omonia as yet. That's what I've heard. Now, I'm not saying that is true. Again, that's what I've heard. Chinese whispers, as they call it. Um, but yeah, listen, I've, I've seen him play. He's a good player. Um, good player for the left-hand side, especially. He can play in number 10 as well. So it's but some maybes. Joey Barton, I did it. Joey Barton got sacked as Bristol Rovers manager. He's not going to fucking come out of retirement. It's not realistic. You need to be realistic there, Stefano. Come on, man. Work with me here. You're not helping me out. And I know a, I know a person who worked with Joey Barton, and he's not a very nice person either. Um, let's have a look. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. Anyway, that's about it. Come on, you got to give me a player, man. Give me a player. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start doing more ro rumours, Dora. I'm going to have to look at like the Polish league and see which players are out of contract and then and then come up with something. Okay, what about the Romanian league? Romania. Out of contract players in Romania. Here we go. Because this is what they do sometimes. They go to like Transfermarkt and they Google end of contract 2021 Romania. And then you look at the league and it gives you a list of all the players that are out of contract in that league. All right. There's a player called Mateo Susic. That's a right back. We don't need the right back. Sefas Malele, 27-year-old striker. He's out of contract. Worth 900,000. Uh, ooh. One minute. Let's find an attacking midfielder. Um, no, we're not going to sign him. Enrico Papa, an Albanian central midfielder. He's out of contract. Siam Ben Youssef, 32 year, years old. Ricardo Valente, there you go, 30 year old Portuguese left winger. Mikel Pereira, right winger, 33 years old. They're too old. Too old. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna keep looking. I'm gonna come up with a stupid rumor just to see what people do. Some 35 year old former Premier League player. 
no, I think we're we're not going to be going down that route anymore. To be honest, I'll be very surprised. What other nations can we talk about here? We've done okay. Israel, Israel. We love to sign a player from Israel. Hang about. No, they don't have a list of them. Okay. Oh well. Patrick Van Arnholt is available. The left back from Crystal Palace. Andros Townsend. Andros Townsend. Edon, Andros Townsend. He's Cypriot. Do you know that? Not many people know this. Andros Townsend. The Crystal Palace player, former Tottenham and Newcastle. He's he's half Cypriot. His mum is Cypriot. In fact, he's been learning to speak Greek. No, sorry. He knows how to speak Greek. He's been learning to write Greek. He's Yayan Bapua Greek. Cypriot. Adel Taraptre. Is he out of contract, Benfica? Adel Tarapt. Can you imagine if we sign him? Fucking player and a half, man. Let's have a look. Contract expires. Uh, 2023, Philemon. 2023. But yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna keep going with Stotch and see what happens. I keep going with Stotch. Right. So that's your transfer show. Thank you for everyone that contributed. Thank you everyone for getting involved. It's been fun. Um, I'm gonna do this more and more often. Sergio Ramos, there. Come on now. Come on now. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Can you imagine? Townsend's mom is from Limassol. There you go. But if she's from Limassol, is she uh, English? Gibra? Is she a Charlie like me? I think she might be a Charlie, you know. Pavel Voslek. Okay. Vinadam from Liverpool. Nah, that'll be good. But um, he'll probably go Barcelona, to be honest, especially if Kuman stays. Mm. But yeah, anyway. Thank you, Bedia. It's been brilliant. Thank you for interacting, and we'll do this very, very soon. Watching Stell spoiling the <laughs> Oh, mate, you know what? Yeah, I can see that happening, innit? Oh, he's never going to join us. And then the next day, he's holding the Fanella with La Cuda. Saka from Arsenal. Yeah, we've got more chance of signing Saka, Saka Khan, a Saka shit, isn't there? No, nah, that Saka shit is for our boy, don't worry. Right, Gobelia, thank you very much. I'm going to wrap it up. You lot have been brilliant. Come on, man. Come on, don't stress. Enjoy the summer. It's COVID summer, man.